You know, as if one profound mystery of the universe is not enough. Recently, dark matter was joined by dark energy as one of the most profound sources of ignorance the astrophysicist faces today. In the late 1990s, teams of researchers led by Saul Palmerter, Brian Schmidt, and Adam Reese discovered that the expanding universe, itself discovered by Edwin Hubble in the 1920s, was accelerating. That turned out to be a Nobel Prize winning measurement. This force that's making it accelerate, we call it dark energy. But since we don't actually know what it is, we could just as easily call it Barney. All right, that's what I want. Dark matter I'll call Fred, dark energy, Barney. It doesn't matter because they're just placeholder words to accommodate our ignorance. You don't want to read too much into those words. Remember, dark matter is this idea of matter that is out there, we believe in space and we come to that conclusion because when we take account of the gravity that can be exerted by the matter that's not dark which means matter that we can see gives off light reflects light matter of that sort the amount of gravity that such matter can exert just is not enough to account for the motions that we see through astrophysical measurements astrophysical data right i mean the analogy that I'd like to use, I think it's a pretty good one. If you have a bicycle wheel that's wet as it spins, you know that the water droplets fly off as the wheel turns. Similarly, in galaxies that are spinning, if they're spinning at a sufficiently fast rate, stars should be flung outward. And we see galaxies for which the stars should be flung outwards, but they're not, which must mean there's something else out there that's holding those stars inside of those galaxies. The belief is, that there's additional matter beyond the matter that we can see with our telescopes and that dark matter is responsible for the gravitational pull that's keeping those stars from flying outwards like the water droplets. Good, that's dark matter. I should say, there's a lot of dark matter, we think. When you do these calculations, there's on the order of four or five times as much dark matter as there is ordinary matter, you know, the stuff that we're made of. So, here's how it works. If the collective gravity of all the galaxies in the universe were all there was, then the expansion of the universe should be slowing down, not speeding up. Because gravity is an attractive force, resisting the expansion. What we found is that there's a mysterious pressure operating in the vacuum of space, and it's combating the gravity and winning. We don't know its origin, we don't know what it is. We're not even sure of its long-term effects. Turns out, Albert Einstein, after he published his new theory of gravity in 1916, that's, of course, the general theory of relativity, he noticed that it predicted a universe that should either be contracting or expanding. Now, that's odd. How could everything you know, how could... How could the universe do anything if it is everything? This was a profound scientific and philosophical dilemma. Unthinkable concept. And if it's expanding or contracting, compared with what? And so Einstein added a mathematically legitimate term to his equations. That term allowed him to stabilize the collapsing influence of gravity in a way to hold up the universe against its wishes. And that way he could keep the universe the same size, whatever size that was. Within just a few years, however, after Edwin Hubble showed that the universe was indeed expanding, Einstein rapidly withdrew the stabilizing term from his equation. You know what he called it? He called the introduction of that term the greatest blunder of my life. He knew, or he felt deep inside, that that term could not be anything physical. There's nothing in the universe that repels matter. Not on large scale, a magnet can do it, but on large scales, there's no known thing that could repel matter. So this term that he added to his equation, he, he, he was very uncomfortable about that. That's what left him to call it the greatest blunder of my life. Turns out, the measurement and existence of dark energy is precisely that term 
in his equations. What that term and his equations do is exactly what we see dark energy doing in the cosmos. So, in fact, Einstein's greatest blunder was saying that the inclusion of that anti-gravity term was his greatest blunder. Isn't it great to be so smart that you're right even when you're wrong? So, here's what you do. You take the energy contained in what we call dark energy, and it's 70% of all that drives the universe. Include with that percentage the dark matter, and we are driven to the humble, mind-blowing conclusion that 96% of all that is the universe is not anything we even remotely understand. 96%. And that all of our laws of physics, everything we know, love, interact with, and understand, or even can predict anything about the future, that falls into the 4% that remains. Dark energies, in terms of the energy mass budget of the universe, is even more substantial on the order of 70% of the mass energy of the universe is this dark energy. Dark energy is a different beast. Dark energy, the most convincing evidence for it are these observations of the accelerated expansion of space. Space is not only getting larger over time, that was a shock. That was the shock that initially was really confirmed through the observations of Edwin Hubble. But not only is the universe getting bigger, it's getting bigger at an accelerated clip. So the expansion is speeding up. How can expansion speed up? Galaxies, they pull on each other with the force of gravity. Force of gravity, we usually think of as pulling things inward, but yet something's pushing outward. And the remarkable thing is that in Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, gravity can actually be repulsive. It can push outward. Not if the source of that gravity is a clump like a star, a clump like a galaxy, a clump like a planet, rather if there's a diffuse energy that is spread uniformly throughout a region of space, then under modest assumptions, it will give rise to a repulsive push, an outward push that can drive the expansion of space to accelerate. And because this energy does not itself give off light, we call it dark energy. Now, actually, it gets worse. Our most successful theory of the universe, quantum physics, allows you to calculate what you might expect to be the energy contained in the vacuum of space. We can do that calculation. It allows it. It predicts that there should be energy there. All right? We do the calculation. Quantum physics, it's never been wrong. It's, a, it's our best understanding going. When you do that calculation, the answer you get does not match reality. The answer you get is off by a factor of 10 to the 20th power. That's a one followed by 120 zeros. Now, that's just embarrassing, I'm sorry, all right? We put forth our best theory to our biggest problem, and it gets us nowhere. In fact, it is the biggest mismatch between theory and observation that there ever was in the history of science. That's our state. That's our state of the science today. So, we are not only ignorant, our best theories in the universe can't guide us. So, I think that means we're driving blind.